Hi, my name is Andrew Edelblum. I'm here for Lions Television, and tonight I am here with Neve Shulman, who is the host and executive producer of the movie and now MTV phenomenon Catfish. Now, Mr. Shulman, can please. I call you Neve? Yes, please. Neve? Okay, all right. I'll call you Neve. Um, just want to ask you. Um, so the movie itself, it got an 82% on Rotten Tomatoes, which is a pretty good score. Um, you got $3 million in the box office. What do you think is the fascination with Catfish? Whew. Well, I think there was the initial uh, buzz surrounding the film, which had a lot to do with the success at Sundance. Mm -hmm. uh, we went into the festival sort of as no-name filmmakers, right. uh, but we were lucky that we had some uh, big producers behind the film, Andrew Jarecki and Mark Smerling, mm -hmm. uh, and they were behind the film Capturing the Freedmans, which is another okay. great documentary that you should go watch. Um, so I think that helped sort of get some initial momentum going, mm -hmm. and then basically, and this was sort of uh, such a thrill for us, the audience experience for watching in watching the film uh, not only did it spawn a tremendous amount of conversation and discussion, but there was this strange path that people had where they wouldn't tell what mm -hmm. happened. Mm -hmm. The audience wanted to keep the secret, uh, or secret, but or rather not spoil the surprise mm -hmm. for future viewers, and that really spurred a huge amount of curiosity. Well, what is this then? What's, what, what is this thing everyone's talking about? Right, there is that big twist at the end. Right. Not to be disclosed. Um, <laughs> at this point, I think. Yeah. <laughs> right. Um, what do you think? Obviously, people related a lot to the film. They're relating a lot to the MTV series. What do you think is the reason for that? Well, I think on the show and in the film, it's, a, it, it, it's the human element. It's the basic storytelling of our lives. Uh, in my case, it was sort of the excitement of falling in love, right. um, the pursuit of some kind of fantasy, mm -hmm. and then, of course, you know, with Angela, it was her very real experience as a, you know, a mom and wife and right. sort of frustrated artist and a somewhat um, bored uh, housewife. Mm -hmm. um, and so people obviously saw maybe parts of themselves in one or both of us. And on the show, what we really go to great lengths to do is try to tell the story of these two people as honestly and fairly and objectively as possible. Absolutely. And everybody has insecurities and fears and uh, issues that they maybe don't want to deal with or don't know how to deal with. And I think when watching the show, you see these people and you see what they're dealing with and you see that in talking about it and dealing with it, Generally, there's a positive result. Right, absolutely. I'll, I'll admit, I actually just started watching the show last week. Love it, by the way. Um, <laughs> and when you're going up to the, to the door to see these people for the first time, my heart is literally pounding as it's happening with all that anticipation. How do you feel being the catalyst of that kind of a reaction? Well, so you know, it's it's. I'm nervous, sort of on two fronts. I'm nervous because I don't know who's going to open the door, uh, and I hope. I've done my my job, or, or effectively enough to predict, to some extent, what we're, what to expect. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, I'm nervous for the person who I'm with, mm -hmm. because a huge emotional uh, weight sort of rests on the oh, you know, yeah. on this yeah. uh, the opening of this door. Um, so yeah, it's nerve wracking, uh, and I don't know. I have no idea what's going to happen, um, and. I just sort of have to keep reminding myself, whatever comes through that door, just remember that you're here to support and you know facilitate the best possible outcome you can. Uh, and I guess for whatever reason, whatever strange sequence of events I've lived through in my life, I have a knack for handling awkward social uh, <laughs> environments. and. Uh, generally works out okay. Yeah, those awkward situations can be tough. I've been there. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, I just want to ask you for your opinion on this. Um, obviously, with all this online romance that's going on, uh, we're in a new age right now. What are your predictions for how online dating will progress in the future? Well, I wish I... Well, I'm not sure. Uh -huh. uh, but a prediction is obviously for that. 
Um, it's, it's no question that online dating will continue to grow. Um, technology is growing, we're, we're all using it more and more, uh, and I think it's a great thing that we can now meet people um, who we otherwise wouldn't be, and you know, you can really cast your net a lot wider, uh, and most likely meet someone that you have similarities with, and who's looking for the same things, and all that sort of relationship stuff. Right. Um, I don't think that it will result in a necessarily more successful relationship right. pairing rate, because the reality is once you meet someone uh, and you're in a relationship, there are an infinite number of reasons why it won't work out. And that's just the, the hardship of love, you know what I mean? Uh, Absolutely. Just because you can meet more people doesn't mean you're going to necessarily get along with more people. You just you might just get along with more, or sorry, you might just not get along with more people. <laughs> right, absolutely. Um, but, but yeah, I, uh, I don't know. I'm also curious to see if there's going to be sort of a, a backlash or uh, a sort of turnaround away from internet connections, yeah. from online dating, um, which to some extent I guess I would also be okay with mm -hmm. because I think the more time we spend looking at each other in the face, uh, talking, you know, in real life, the better. Absolutely. So we'll see. All right, well, it looks like we have time for one more question. I'm going to quote you directly now. Um, you said in the movie, um, and I thank God for the catfish because we would be droll. Boring and droll if we didn't have somebody nipping at our phone. Um, so obviously that's a more um, positive spin on the idea of a catfish as a whole. Um, just what, what are some remarks on that? Why do you think that catfish uh, make a positive difference as opposed to a negative one? Well, just to be clear, you're quoting Vince. Oh, I'm quoting Vince. In that. Okay. Uh, but that is that is a direct quote. Right. But I, it wasn't what I said. Um, I I think, and this is maybe because I hope that I could be viewed this way myself. Mm -hmm. That the, you know, you could call us troublemakers, uh, different, but people who operate outside of the lines to some extent, who do things that are not. Uh, necessarily the norm are the people who make a difference in, in many cases. Not to say that you can't make a wonderful difference uh, doing things by the book, but um, I think the catfish, people who do things uh, that maybe at times are a little unacceptable, maybe at times a little risky, uh, those are the things that mix things up and, and oftentimes lead to change and innovation uh, and in my case hugely important learning experience. So I do think uh, catfish can mm -hmm. be very positive if if the people who are affected by it are able to turn it into a positive experience. Adding to the spice of life, I like that. Exactly. Awesome. Well, I'm Andrew Edelblum and this has been Neve Shulman. Uh, we're here for Lions Television. Thanks.